Sharp angle shot, save, rebounds loose, they score! Keeper Bellows goals in four straight games. What a goal for Oliver Wallstrom, a highlight reel tally, cross ice pass, Wotherspoon scores! Parker Wotherspoon times the game. This is a production of the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, proud American Hockey League affiliate of the New York Islanders. On for the return pass extended, Simon Holmes from he tracks, shoots, he scores! First in North America for Simon Holmstrom. I'm head coach Brent Thompson, and this is Sound Tigers Hockey. Well, it's game week, Sound Tigers fans. Welcome to the podcast. It's called Sound Up. This is February the 2nd of 2021. I'm Alan Buring. Thanks for joining us. Boy, it feels like hockey season out there, doesn't it? It's winter time, and uh, well, it's a bit random, but today is also Groundhog Day. And I'm not even sure Punxsutawney Phil is going to be able to climb out of his hole to find out if he can see his shadow this year. Easily more than a foot of snow here in Connecticut as well as over in Pennsylvania. And, uh, yeah, it feels like hockey season it is. Of course, the National Hockey League well underway. The New York Islanders playing again tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. And for their American Hockey Hockey League affiliates, the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, they get going this weekend. It's been a long, long time since the Sound Tigers have had a regular season game. You've got to go back to March the 11th of uh, 2020. They defeated Toronto at home in that one, 4-1. to one. And uh, again, the shutdown was that night. We haven't played a game since. And this Friday, February the 5th, we get back underway against the Providence Bruins. Talked about uh, Punxsutawney Phil in Pennsylvania there right off the top. Now, Pennsylvania isn't very far away at all, but the Sound Tigers won't be traveling there this season. Only two road trips, and they'll make both of those this weekend. They've got Hartford on Sunday, and then uh, up first on Friday in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Just three days from now, they'll take on the Providence Bruins. The Bruins, of course, relocating to the New England Sports Center in Marlboro, Mass., just outside of Boston this year. Well, training camp's going on right now at Webster Bank Arena, and actually quite literally here as uh, this podcast drops at 11 o'clock Eastern time. The team is on the ice. It's all in preparation for the abbreviated 2021 regular season and more specifically for Friday's opener, which is at 1 o'clock. All of the games, all 24, are at 1 o'clock in the afternoon this season. It's the first of 12 meetings coming up between the Sound Tigers and the Boston Bruins top affiliate in their first of six in Massachusetts. Well, you can expect that opening day roster, if you will, to officially drop on Thursday, and you won't really notice much of a difference between that and the training camp roster this year, which is up now at SoundTigers.com. And that's because, of course, the Worcester Railers, unfortunately, are not playing in the ECHL. And so since they are out, Sound Tigers will hold on to some extra players than what you see in a normal season. That roster will be a little bit bigger of course, the New York Islanders roster this year is a little bit bigger as well. And so some names that typically you would see on the Sound Tigers roster aren't going to be there because of that expanded roster in the NHL. And, of course, taxi squads playing a role in there as well. And I mentioned that Sound Tigers training camp roster is online right now. Some notes on the roster as it stands. It's got 30 players, 18 forwards, 9 defensemen, 3 goaltenders, Five different countries represented this year, currently 12 from the United States, 15 were born in Canada, and three players were born overseas. You got one from Sweden, of course that's the 23rd overall pick in the 2019 NHL draft, Simon Holmstrom. You've got the uh, goaltending prospect of Jakob Skarnik from the Czech Republic, and Tom Kunakl signed an American Hockey League deal in January. He's with the Sound Tigers, a native of Germany. We'll talk about him and Andrew Ladd, both on the Sound Tigers training camp roster right now. That adds a whole lot of experience. On paper, a whole lot of games played in the NHL for sure, but uh, all that experience as well that translates into the locker room and on the ice. It'll be a lot of fun to watch those guys help develop some young prospects this season over the course of 24 games. 15 players on the training camp roster right now are AHL rookies. Nine of those guys looking to make their professional debut. Perhaps the majority of those nine will see their debut come this Friday. The average age, 24.6 years of age entering the season. 14 players, 23 years of age or younger. The youngest player right now for the second straight year, in fact, 
is Simon Holmstrom. He's 19 years old. He was uh, 18 years old last year. Actually, is uh, currently the youngest Sound Tiger ever to put on a Bridgeport jersey. And we look forward to having Simon Holmstrom back in the lineup this year. Finally, 17 players on an NHL contract. That includes names like Cole Bardro. Of course, we talked about Andrew Ladd already. Goaltender Jakob Skarik, a part of it, but also uh, forward A.J. Greer, who came over in a trade with Colorado for Kyle Burrows over the offseason. He's on an NHL deal, and uh, several young guys, a lot of young forwards, including three entry-level deals signed back in May. That include Felix Bebo, Kolkowski, and Blade Jenkins. A lot of excitement around this organization. Uh, just so much to look forward to despite only playing 24 games this season. This is going to be a lot of fun here today. This podcast hopefully won't just be about entertainment. It's because we're hoping and, and we always strive that it's informative as well. And that's what we're hoping is the case on this edition of the Sound Up podcast. It's a Sound Tigers season preview. We'll hear from general manager Chris Lamorello, also head coach Brent Thompson, and a whole bunch of players, including youngsters Bodie Wild and Sam Bolduc, who are expecting to play big minutes on the blue line all the way through this season. One thing that everyone is wondering, I've been asked this question so many times, it's how did the Sound Tigers arrive at a decision to play 24 games this season, which, I mean, some teams are playing 40 or more games. San Diego slated to play 44 this year. Bridgeport and Hartford play the fewest in the American Hockey League. Here's what Chris Lamorello recently told the media when asked that exact question. Well, we had a lot of communication with our divisional partners, and we felt that this schedule put us in a position with players that hadn't played in almost a calendar year, a lot of them, uh, they were going to need a lot of practice. We did not want to put them in situations where we were playing too many games and didn't have enough time to prepare for the games or enough time to respond to the stress that a normal season would give you. So we basically felt, you know, two games a week, if you look at it on average almost, made a lot of sense. It allowed us developmentally uh, on and off ice opportunity to work on their skill sets and where they're at developmentally. Uh, I can't tell you it was a magic number, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, we had great uh, communication with our divisional partners, and it just seemed to make sense. Well, in the three-team Atlantic division, of course, those divisional partners that Chris Lamarello spoke about, Hartford and Providence. And so when you play so few games and you only play two opponents, something you think about pretty uh, frequently is where's that line at? How do you balance development with winning and, and trying to chase a divisional title in 24 games. Here's what Chris had to say. This year, we've got a young group of forwards uh, that we're excited to start to work with. Uh, we feel that the roster that we have as we open camp here will give the coaches enough support uh, to be able to, to look at different lineups each and every night and accomplish what you just said, uh, a primary role in development. But they want to win every practice. They want to win every game. So there won't be any less emphasis on the result, but obviously with a shorter season, some decisions will be made a little bit differently than you normally would make because, you know, we're only going to have about three months to maximize whatever we can do. So it'll be a delicate balance, but it's something we've been thinking about. And, and every year you have to manage the development and, and, and the winning and losing aspect of it. And your roster is always changing. So, this year, we'll see how the rosters change during the year, and we'll manage it as best as we can. But I, I think the coaches are really looking forward to that challenge. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, you hit the nail right on the head. It will be a challenge in so many different ways, things you don't even think about right now. And one challenge for head coach Brent Thompson is trying to build relationships with so many young guys. I mentioned earlier that nine players are looking to make their pro debut this season, 15 guys are American Hockey League rookies. So when you're still getting to know this team and these guys, Brent Thompson talks about how he builds relationships, not person-to-person -person as much this year, but through a computer screen like over Zoom. It's been a challenge, to be honest. It's, uh, we have little things we do, uh, you know, whether they're our, you know, our own little uh, questionnaires or just talking to them in general. Uh, we have some team building ideas through Zoom that we're going to be trying to implement through the course of this first month. Um, you know, so for me, it's uh, 
just constantly talking to him. I, 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 told, I tell the guys, it's plain and simple. I don't know you yet. I want to get to know you. You have questions for me. What do you need from me? And what are your objectives and what are your you know, goals? We're team, short-term, long-term. And then we just talk about it. And, and moving forward from there, it's, it's up to us to kind of do it on the ice and, and bring it to the games. Well, Zoom meetings are one of the day-to-day realities now that, uh, of course, the Sound Tigers, but uh, pretty much every team, the AHL, the NHL, all over the world, any level, they're kind of having to adapt to that. And uh, there's so many different new you know, practices, uh, things you have to do with hygiene, but uh, a lot of protocols out there as well. And Brent Thompson talks about how his uh, players are handling all of these new protocols across the league. Players are handling it great. Uh, I thought we did a great job organizationally uh, setting the bar, following the NHL standards. Uh, the organization has been fantastic. The players have followed the rules, um, and everything seems to be going on on point right now. Very mm-hmm. happy with the way the guys are doing things. They're coming in when they're supposed to. They're leaving. They've been uh, quarantined and, and, and trying to keep within their little bubble that they're required to be in. So I'm really happy with the steps – the organization's taken and with the way the players have responded to it, it this year is going to be different and but yeah. everybody wants to play so there's going to be sacrifices but we get to play and that's the most important thing yeah and speaking of sacrifice in the american hockey league in general there's no roster limits there's no maximum amount of players when rosters are expanded even more like they will be this year i mean one of the sacrifices that some guys are going to have to make is uh, the amount of time that they're on the ice. And so, you know, you always have a mixture of veterans and rookies. And this year there's three veterans on the training camp roster right now. When you look at Andrew Ladd, Tom Kunakel, and also Seth Helgeson, who enters his fourth year with the Sound Tigers after re-signing and uh, agreeing to an AHL deal back in October. So a couple of things here. We'll start with the veterans. Brent Thompson talks about what he can expect from his veterans and also how he keeps them engaged in a situation where they might have to sacrifice being on the ice for a game or two. I think that's you know a challenge for our staff, but I also know the kind of character that we have as far as leadership and uh, our older guys, if you call them older, they're not, there's not a lot of them and they're not really that super old, but I, I, I think with them, it's the same idea. It's their opportunity to, to grab the bull by the horns and establish themselves as a leader of the group, establish themselves that, Hey, I belong here. This is, I'm a dominant American League player. I'm pushing on the bubble. I'm a depth guy for the NHL. I want two more years. And they're going to help direct those young guys and show what kind of team person they are. And I really think that's the motivation is these guys want to show that they, they want to be here and they want to uh, want to be here long-term, not just, you know, these 20 some games or whatever, however games we end up playing and then be done. So this is an opportunity for them to showcase themselves that this is, what their role will be with the team moving forward, and they can be there in a depth position for the future. Well, and then when you shift your attention to the younger guys and all the rookies on the team, a lot of these guys, by the way, were in New York Islanders training camp back in January before the NHL season got underway on January the 13th. Brent Thompson talks about the advantage that those guys had in the Islanders training camp when you look at guys like Simon Holmstrom, Bodie Wild, Sam Bolduc, and their progression. I think it's a big advantage uh, as far as just getting in the intense practice environment of the NHL and with the Islanders and getting that, get being grounded with some of the structure right away. Uh, you know, the guys, those particular guys you mentioned, I see huge differences and huge improvements um, in, in a lot of those players. You know, I, one of the guys that stands out in my mind right now of the practices we've had is Simon Holmstrom. He seems stronger, more balanced, uh, you know, more confident with the puck in the corners, able to take the puck to the net, the battles, he's engaging himself. Or last year there was that cautiousness, if you will. Um, Bodies seems to be put together a little stronger, put on some weight. So each guy is, like I said, done a lot to prepare for this year and that extra time off. And then the time with the Islanders um, with some of these guys has been outstanding. And so those guys are kind of the guys that are, and I've challenged them that they're driving the engine in our practices. They've had, they've got a little leg up on the guys that had to sit in quarantine for a time frame before they can get on the ice. 
Great stuff there from head coach Brent Thompson, and uh, he talks about all the younger guys. One of the interesting ones is Samuel Bolduc, who is now going to turn pro out of the QMJHL. Uh, a lefty defenseman, a big guy, six foot four, two hundred and thirteen pounds. He's actually been compared at times to a young Victor Hedman, which is some very high praise. He's only 20 years of age, and again, out of the QMJHL, he'll turn pro with the Sound Tigers this year. And, uh, you know, he's really excited to come to Bridgeport for a number of reasons, a former second-round draft pick. One of those reasons being the uh, the track record that the Sound Tigers have had in developing and moving on defensemen to full-time spots in the National Hockey League. You look at examples like Adam Pellick, Ryan Pollock, Scott Mayfield, Devon Taves prior to his trade to Colorado, and uh, what that means to Sam Bolduc. Here's his take. It's pretty nice, uh, like you said, the uh... There's a lot of guys uh, with the Islanders now that pass through Bridgeport, so it shows that they're, they're developing. Uh, they're good at developing guys in the, uh, with the, the Sound Tigers, and I think it's just a plus for me to uh, to go to play a couple of seasons with the with the, uh, the Bridgeport and Tigers and be. And when my time is going to be there, I'm going to be ready to to join the Islanders. And we heard from Brent Thompson on uh, what he thought the progression has been uh, with his young guys who are in Islanders training camp. Sam Bolduc touching on that himself, his own uh, takeaways and his own thoughts on being at Islanders camp over at uh, Northwell Health Ice Center. Uh, it was great. Um, I think the the first couple practice, my execution wasn't very on point, but more the um, you know more the the camp was going. The more I was getting a little bit comfortable, and uh, during the camp I was a lot with uh, Boy Chuck. Was he talked a lot to me about things that I can do and what's really important to do in the NHL to uh, to be uh, a good player and to be uh, able to have some success. Well, from one second rounder to another former second round pick, how about Bodie Wild? Turned pro last year with the Sound Tigers, played 20 games, then was uh, sent back to juniors in February. He got a lot of good experience, had a couple of assists in 20 games. Went through a number change here with Bridgeport, and he wore 46 last year. He'll wear number eight this season, and he's a guy to keep an eye on at the blue line. A youngster, a guy who has a very bright future. In fact, Barry Trotz compared him to a young John Carlson. You know, that's pretty awesome. That's that's high praise, obviously. He won a cup with John Carlson, and um, that's a guy I watch a lot. And you know, now I get to watch him a lot play against the Islanders with with the way everything is set up this year. So, um, yeah, that was that was awesome to hear. And it was uh, it was definitely, you know, some motivation and um, kind of cool to hear from a guy who, you know, like, like, I guess doesn't give a lot of praise like that. So, <laughs> Yeah, he, he sure doesn't. I mean, Barry Trotz tells it how it is, doesn't always give uh, high praise like that, but did for Bodie Wild. And uh, as he just mentioned right there, I mean, that will certainly add to whatever motivation you already have. And uh, Bodie Wild, one of those 17 players currently on the training camp roster who is on a National Hockey League contract. Six players have NHL experience, and uh, that adds up to more than 1,300 games of National Hockey League experience currently with the Sound Tigers. One of those guys had a memorable NHL debut and a memorable first goal on a penalty shot last year. Who could forget Cole Bardrow, who is back with the Sound Tigers this year. He's on a two-year deal with the New York Islanders. This is the second year of that two-year agreement. And uh, Cole Barnes is going to be a big piece of the leadership group. Wouldn't be surprised if he wears a letter for the Sound Tigers this year. He caught up with the media as well recently. And uh, he caught up with the media as well recently. And uh, one of the questions he was asked is, uh, what's it going to be like playing against only two teams? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's going to be interesting for sure, obviously. And, you know, the American League, you, you see that you're kind of local opponents more often than not anyways. But during a normal season, it's kind of spaced out a little bit at least, but um, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's, it's going to get chippy to say the least, I think too. I think, you know, you're going to get sick of the same old guys night in and night out. Um, you know, you're going to have a good idea of their special teams that, you know, their power play and their penalty kill and their system. So 
there's going to be a lot of adjustments that are needed. Um, but again, I think it's kind of, you know, this is new for everyone. It's going to be kind of trial and error as you go. And we're going to kind of, you know, can't really plan for it. Yeah, you, you certainly can't plan for it. Everything is unpredictable right now. And uh, while there are a lot of negatives, I actually talked on the podcast last week about, you know, how do you kind of see the silver lining in all of this? And to me, the, the big silver lining is that we are playing hockey. You know, there were so many travel restrictions and uh, financial implications as well, but we are playing. And so that uh, makes me excited and thankful just to get some games under our belt this season of course, the unfortunate part of Bridgeport playing and specifically at home games this year is that fans won't be permitted into Webster Bank Arena to watch, at least not to start this season. And so I asked Cole Bardrow about if he allows himself to think about what it's going to be like to play a home game in front of no fans. Obviously, there's a lot of negatives to that, but uh, may- maybe some positives as well. Yeah, it's de- it's definitely going to be different. And like you said, that that is, uh, I think, you know, only guys that, that play the game or, or are very familiar with the game kind of realize how much benefit can come from a crowd, whether, you know, you're tired and you make a big hit and, and you know, a little crowd action kind of gets you going a little bit more. Um, but at the end of the day, I think you kind of just got to, you know, see the glass half full, see the benefits of it. Maybe it you know, it takes the pressure off some of these young kids who, you know, this is going to be their first, their first pro games. And, you know, a big crowd can kind of, you know, make you tighten up on your stick a little bit. So maybe for me, that's what, that's my mindset is kind of, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be a little bit less pressure from having so many eyeballs on you and, uh, you know, try to view it from that standpoint. And the Sound Tigers home schedule begins Saturday, February the 13th. They'll be at home against the Providence Bruins in that one. Well, again, hockey's right around the corner. The season opener is this Friday, and uh, we are just so excited to get going. All games will be broadcast live on AHL TV this season. Last week on the podcast, we sat down with Sound Tigers VP of Ticket Sales and Service, John Forsberg. He let us know that if you... Uh, put a deposit down or purchase a season ticket membership for 2021-22. You'll get AHL TV absolutely free here for this abbreviated season. So that's a nice little perk there. Uh, make sure you give the Sound Tigers front office a call if you'd like to take advantage of that. AHL TV will have the video streaming of the games. Also, uh, the Sound Tigers radio network powered by Mixler will have the radio broadcast for all home and away games this season, starting with the opener on Friday. Finally, on the podcast, we'll hear from veteran Seth Helgeson, who returns for his fourth season with the Sound Tigers. And for my money, I mean, I don't see anyone else who is more deserving of wearing this C this year then Seth Helgeson, Sound Tigers captain, a year ago was Kyle Burrows. Over the offseason, he was traded to Colorado for A.J. Greer. And so Bridgeport needs a new captain this year. And again, I've got to think Seth Helgeson checks every single box when it comes to the type of leader on and off the ice that you want in a, a captain. And there's some other guys in there as well. I mean, Tanner Fritz, Cole Bardrow, they've certainly been around but uh, Seth Helgeson has paid his dues. He's been an alternate captain ever since he came to the Sound Tigers back in 2017. What would it mean to Seth to wear that C and be the full-time captain of the Sound Tigers? Yeah, that'd be a great honor. Um, just from being being here for the last three years, going on my fourth year, um, you know, as I said before, an honor and uh, you kind of look up to the guys that were captains previous year and uh, kind of to be in that uh, position um, would be would be definitely cool for myself. Hey, we'll just see if Seth's got that, uh, that letter on his jersey come Friday. Sound Tigers and Providence Bruins in Marlboro, Massachusetts this Friday, a 1 o'clock start. Again, the games will be broadcast on AHL TV and the Sound Tigers radio network beginning at 1245 Eastern Time next Friday afternoon. Hey, I'm Alan Furing. Thanks again for joining us on this Sound Up podcast. It's been a lot of fun. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. And for the first time in a long time, we'll have a game, uh, two games actually, to review. And then we'll set the stage for the home opener coming up on Saturday, February the 13th. I'm Alan Furing. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Have a great rest of your day and week.